Hey there, General Hospital fans. I've got your recap for Tuesday, September 24th, season 62, episode 16. Christina is caught lying by the cops and Diane freaks out. It's Belinda from Soap Dirt and let's dive right in. So Jack Brennan is back at Bobby's Diner for breakfast with an update for Carly that Sidwell invited Anna and Jason to his compound, but they haven't saved Lucky yet. He is a little concerned about variables at play, especially Sidwell's mystery girlfriend that we all know is Holly. He thinks Jason and Anna are safe so far. Carly is worried because Jason's a terrible liar, and Brennan said Anna's a good one. Maybe she can lie for them both. Diane shows up at the diner asking Carly for her usual order and to meet this handsome guy. She introduces Jack to Diane, and of course he knows she is Sonny's lawyer as well as Carly's, and Diane wants to know if Brennan is there interrogating her and then asks to talk to Carly alone, so the WSB local chief takes off. Carly asks Diane what the hell, and she says Carly cannot be seen flirting with the local WSB station chief. She says that Carly and Sonny need to look like they are reuniting because the PCPD and the feds are watching them and that they need to do a better job supporting this alibi and flirting with handsome Jack is a bad idea. Diane says they have to sell this Carly-Sonny reunion and Carly says... She thinks it should just be a one-night stand, and Diane says that is not enough for the alibi to stick. She says Carly and Sonny need to be sharing a roof, and Carly's not happy about that, and she tells Carly basically it's too late. They need to look in love or else, and says they're going to dig into Sonny and find something. Carly says, eh, they're always after him, but Diane says it's a problem for them both. Sonny will go to prison as Kate's killer, and Carly will go to prison as his accessory after the fact. Meanwhile, Natalia heads to Pizzullo's and finds Sonny arguing with his espresso machine. He said his old one worked better. Natalia talks about not hanging on to the past when you have a good future in front of him. It's just all this flirting blah. Natalia tells Sonny a dumb coffee anecdote and then makes him some espresso. Flirty, flirty, flirty. He's raving about it and tells her he's stressed out, can't sleep. She asks about Alexis and Christina. And Sonny tells her he hired a lawyer for Alexis to ease Christina's mind. She mentions Blaze being worried about Christina, offers to help any way she can. And then Carly comes in and finds Sonny with his hand on Natalia's, and she kind of flips, asks to talk to him alone. So Natalia takes off. Carly lays right into Sonny and says, Diane came at her about flirting, and now he's getting handsy with what's her name. Sonny wants to know who Carly's flirting with, and... She's annoyed and won't tell him, does tell him that Diane is freaked out, said they have to look like they are falling back in love and be seen out together. She says this one night stand thing is not enough, according to Diane. Tell Sonny he is still the top suspect in the murder and they are looking for evidence against him. She's aggravated about having to stick with him or face jail. And Sonny kind of laughs and says, I guess you're stuck as my girlfriend. And she says they are not going to lie to the kids, worried that hopes of reunion would break Donna's heart. So Sonny asks her out for dinner and drinks tonight. Carly says it's a date and then jokes about no flirting with other guys. Molly shows up with breakfast to TJ's office, talks about how she got home late and slept on the couch. And he wants to know where she was last night before that. And she says she knew TJ was in surgery and she was upset and she ran into Dex and he was asking what they talked about. She said Alexis's case. And then TJ mentioned she never texted him back last night. Molly's making excuses. TJ assures her he's there for her. He loves her. She can tell him anything. And she's very worried because Alexis isn't even defending herself and says that it's all about protecting Christina as usual. And she doesn't know exactly what Christina needs protected from. And then TJ wonders if Christina just came forward with that ended and save Alexis. And then he wonders if her sister would actually kill Jagger. And Molly says, Christina 
seems to be capable of anything lately. She says that Sam is sure that Sonny is the shooter, but Molly is very worried it's Christina and thinks that's why Alexis is doing what she's doing. Molly says, this is my whole life story. Alexa always shields Christina from her own choices. TJ again says, I got your back. And Molly gets a text to run to work and takes off, but says she'll try to be home early, but he looks very worried. Aunt Stella shows up at TJ's office and says she saw Molly zooming past. And he says Molly is obviously struggling with what's going on with Alexis and says that he doesn't think Molly is really coping with the grief of losing their baby. Stella agrees and TJ's frustrated because Molly won't talk about her feelings and he is starting to blame Christina and Stella encourages them and, you know, for him to keep at it. And then he says he wanted to visit baby Irene's grave, but Molly took off. So Stella offers to go with him. Now we have Dante bringing Christina and her stuff back to her apartment from Alexis's house. And she asks for an update on Lulu and Lucky. Dante has no news on Lucky and says Lulu's hanging in and he asks if she'll be okay there alone. And Christina says she's worried about Alexis and then talks about joining a support group, seeing a therapist, all that. Dante calls her brave for getting help and Christina admits she feels all over the place and doesn't trust herself anymore because of all the bad decisions she's made. Dante offers to stick around. Christina says, no, just go. She has to show people she can take care of herself And then there's a knock at the door. It's Detective Chase, who tells Christina that he needs to ask her some questions. They sit down. They look at Dante. He awkwardly takes off, but in the hallway, makes a call and leaves a message saying Christina is about to do something she should not do. And then Chase starts asking Christina where she was the night Cates was killed. And she wants to know why he's asking her when her mother has been charged with the crime. And Chase says, it's a loose end. Ask again where she was. Christina says, I already told you. Postpartum depression, went to the cemetery alone. Then Chase starts asking if she drove. And she says, oh, I can't remember. And then he says her car is still in the Metrocourt garage and hasn't moved and asks if she drove Alexis's car that night. Uh Uh-oh. We know she did. And she tells Chase things are spotty in her memory just because of the depression, the grief. And then Christina says maybe she took a ride share. Big mistake, right? Digital footprint. And Chase asks, okay, which ones do you use? But then... Saved by a knock at the door. It is Diane who wants to know why Chase is there and if he's questioning Christina without her legal counsel. Chase wants to know why Diane is there and she said she brought soup. And he promises to be in touch and takes off. And then Diane tells Christina she just needs to be very quiet. Chase hot foots it over to General Hospital to confront Dante about why Diane showed up at Christina's place. And he says, it's not a good time to interview his sister because she's grieving. Chase says, I'm just doing my job and says Christina is hiding something and was talking to him until Dante pulled that stunt. And back at the apartment, Diane reminds Christina she is not her lawyer and she cannot say things to her that will be legally protected, but does say that because Chase was interrogating her without counsel, Whatever she told him is inadmissible. Christina's happy because she said she incriminated herself. And Diane says, get your own lawyer ASAP. Because even though they can't use what she said in court, they can use it to expand the investigation and find out what's really going on. And that freaks Christina out. Diane says, get yourself a lawyer because Chase is going to be moving on whatever you said. Back at the hospital, Chase reminds Dante that he can't work Kate's case because of a conflict of interest. And then he pulled this and he tells Dante he better step back from the investigation And Chase promises him if he gets in his way again, he will turn Dante in and he marches off. Over at Pentonville, Alexis wakes up to Heather creepily staring at her from the top bunk. And Alexis complains about her back after sleeping on the bunk and tells Heather this isn't her first prison rodeo when she's trying to give her some advice. Alexis says Heather snores and Heather's like, eh, you'll get used to the sound. So 
Heather says she wants to help her, but Alexis feels sure the charges will be dropped. But Heather said, no, no, not talking about your legal issues. I'm talking about you losing your granddaughter and almost losing your daughter. And she tells Alexis she's really sorry. And she's pretty much in shock that Heather's like a human being now. She's freaking her out with genuine sympathy and talks to Alexis about how she dreams of doing grandmother things and has never gotten to hold her grandson Ace and said her shot to get out of here just went away. So she gets what Alexis is going through. And then Heather jokingly threatens her and says they're going to have beef if she ruins her sleep again. The guard comes for Alexis to take her to see her lawyer, a lawyer she didn't even know she had. Martin Gray says, I'm here to represent you and ask the guard to leave them alone. And he tells Alexis that Sonny hired him, which surprises her. And he's asking, you know, how the night went, all that good stuff. Martin says, of course, Alexis can fire him, but he does not recommend it and asks why she did what she did in her PCPD interrogation. She says he's hired. It's all privilege now. And then admits she is protecting Christina, says her daughter didn't kill Kate's, but it looks bad. He wants to know what happened, so she tells Martin that Jagger was tormenting Christina while she was recovering. She found the gun in Christina's purse and thought she would hurt herself, and that's why she dumped the gun. But she definitely left out a bunch of information when talking to the police. And he basically says, yeah, you lied about Christina, and now you are in prison. Martin tells her to amend her statement and tell the truth and just let the police investigate, and Christina will be naturally exonerated. And Alexis says, no, I can't do it. Christina took my car, drove to the Quartermains. She was looking for Kate's to kill him. And Martin asked, okay are you sure Christina didn't kill him and she says yeah and he goes all right and he again pushes for her to let the cops investigate but she won't do it and Martin says there's one option to save yourself if you're willing to do it and tells Alexis her only chance is for them to prove that Sonny killed Jagger not her or Christina that is it and by the way Kelly Monaco is back as Sam McCall on Wednesday's episode. Stay tuned. Hope you enjoyed the recap. Click subscribe if you haven't. It's Belinda from Soap Dirt, talking General Hospital seven days a week. Thank you for being a loyal listener. Follow us wherever you get your podcast because you don't want to miss the next episode. Soap Dirt is on all the major podcast platforms, including Apple Podcast, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and more. 